Hello, this is Patty Bennett. Welcome back to another Patty Stamps video tutorial. Today I am featuring these gorgeous orchid cards. Aren't they so pretty? This is a Stampin' Up! stamp set on page 21 of the current 2017 catalog. You can see it has lots of pieces and you can see down here it has 28 photopolymer stamps. All of these supplies, by the way, that I'm showing you are available in my Stampin' Up! online store. So here's what the stamp set looks like and there are matching framelits. Now you're going to want to purchase this in a bundle because you save 10% and I really don't think you're going to want to cut all these out by hand, so the framelits are amazing. So I'm going to show you how that works in just a moment. So let's just take a close-up look at a couple of these cards, and then I'm going to give you several tips for using these stamps and dies. So you can see that here I have a branch and a jar, also die cut, and then I've placed the orchids on there. Now these are from separate um, bundles and stamp sets. So the jar is separate and that branch also is separate. It does not come in this set, but I thought the combination was pretty amazing. And then here I used a background piece that I had embossed with embossing paste that has a little bit of glitter in it. And then I used the branch again just to put those beautiful orchids on. And here is a little small note card size. And then this is one that I actually made for a wedding, and I thought this was very beautiful. Not your typical wedding card, but I was really happy with the way it came out, and I hope that the bride and groom absolutely love it. So when you're looking at this stamp set, if you're like me, you might think, whoa, what do I do with all these pieces? That's exactly what I said, and I really wasn't sure. I took some clues from the samples in the catalog, and then, of course, I checked Pinterest because isn't that just such a wonderful resource? And then I kind of saw how these went together. And basically, if you look at these full images, I'm just going to call it the full image, you'll actually see that it's made up of this in the background and then this on top. And I'll show you how that works. But I just want to tell you, if you sort of forget, reference back to these bigger images and I think you'll be able to figure out how to cut and layer these. In this Climbing Orchid set, there are actually four separate flowers. You can see the larger one with the spots here and the smaller one here and then the outline image here and the smaller one here. You could stamp and use these just as is and just leave them flat and I believe that's about what they did in the sample here on page 21. Or you can build up several layers like this and that's what I did on these cards. So I want to show you the pieces that I stamped and give you a couple of tips for layering them. For this card, you can see that I used the image that has the spots. So here's the full image, here's the image of three petals, and here is the image with two petals. And all of those layered together will create this. And when you look at it from the side, you can see that there's a lot of dimension and a lot of layers. So I'm going to grab the Big Shot. Let's die cut these and I'll show you how to assemble them. Here's my Big Shot die cutting machine. I use the magnetic platform for about 90% of my die cutting. I really like it. And this is a clear plate, even though it doesn't look very clear. It's very loved. I die cut every day. I use these plates multiple times a day, so they get a lot of use. Here's my stamped piece. Now I'm going to take the largest full flower image. I'm just going to call that the full flower because it's the whole thing, not just petals. And center it there on my flower. And then we have the piece that has the three petals, and it's kind of like a triangle. You can see one is up here and then two of them are closer together over here. So that will just lay right here on top of that one. 
And then we have the third one. Now this one has an area that has a little more space and a smaller space, and that's how you can kind of tell how this one fits right on there. I'm going to die cut a big leaf. And you can see that I have spaced these far enough apart so that I can cut them all at once. Now if you have a large um, image, it usually sticks pretty well with the magnetic plate. The smaller pieces, you can see how this one wanted to go crooked. And so I am just going to take a piece of washi tape and lay it right on there and secure that in place so that it doesn't move while I'm getting everything else on here and the and you know I just want to make sure that it stays so I think let's do that as well for this one just to make sure and we are just going to put our clear plate on here run this through the big shot and die cut those shapes you only need one pass through since these are framelits and they die cut really nicely when they go straight through just once. So here we have our pieces and you can see they're just coming right out. Oh, I forgot to die cut the center. Okay, I'll have to do that. But let's take the rest of these out. And then we'll just take the washi tape off as well. But you can see that that held them nicely in place so that they didn't shift around. So here we have our pieces. Let me just die cut the center. Some tips now for assembling our die cut pieces. You're going to want a bone folder, adhesive. I like the multi-purpose glue and the dimensionals for this. And then I also used a wink of Stella pen. And that is how I got the shading here. You see how it's a little bit darker in the center and it fades out to light on the tips? I did that with the Wink of Stella pen. So I'll show you how I did that. Now you want to just curl each petal and make sure that you're holding on to the flower while you do that. You don't just want to rip the petal right off. So you're really holding on to it and giving that petal some shape. This really makes them look realistic. It makes them look so pretty when you do this little extra step of curling. Again, just hold on to it. Don't let, don't pull it right off. All right, do you see all this dimension? It's wonderful. It just looks great in person. Before we glue it together, this is where I'm going to use my Wink of Stella pen and shake it up. And I just have one of those little makeup wipes here in a dish, and I just like to squeeze my pen on that and dab it a little bit just to make sure that I don't get a blob on my project. And I'm going to start at the center of each flower and pull some color outward. I'm not going all the way to the tip. And this is one thing that really helps to give them even more dimension. So there you go. Do you see that? How it's just giving it a little more dimension right in the center. I'm going to do that on the top two layers. These two were colored, I mean, excuse me, stamped in Berry Burst. And the bottom one I stamped in Fresh Fig. The bottom one, as you can see, is really not going to show, but if you're just tilting it from the side a little bit, you know it's under there and it gives it that extra layer. So we don't even have to color that one. And then to put these layers together, I preferred a Stampin' Dimensional right in the center of this bottom large layer. And then I am just duplicating this design right on top of this one. And if I lay it here, do you see how that just is duplicating the petals that are under there? So that's what I want to do. I just want to match them up and give it just that extra bit of dimension. And then for this layer, you could do another dimensional, but it got a little bit thick to do too many dimensionals. So I put a dab of the multi-purpose glue 
And then I'm just going to hold this. Just takes, you know, just a few seconds to dry. And then my top little layer is going to be this center. And on that one, I did like a Stampin' Dimensional. So I'm going to put that on the back and add this to the flower. And it, since that one's still drying a little bit, I'll show you this one again. But that's basically it. So that is how I layered together all of those layers and how I colored this one. On here, you can see that I did use the die cut leaves but I sponged the edge a bit and I added the Wink of Stella and I really liked that bit of added dimension. As I mentioned before, this jar is in a separate set. It's another die cut as well as that branch that is in seasonal layers and I thought this branch was perfect for these orchids. I kind of think that in real life, I don't think the leaves are actually coming out from behind the orchid. I'm not an orchid expert. I grow roses. <laughs> uh, but I did, I liked the way that the green kind of peeked back behind there and gave it some added interest. And so that's why I did it. In the back, can you see this beautiful embossed background? That is the layered leaves embossing folder. And it gave this card such a pretty extra little touch. I do want to show you again the difference between this image and this image. So this was the outlined image that I stamped in archival black and I colored it in. I used the Wink of Stella pen as if it were a paintbrush. I dipped it, the tip, into lemon lime twist ink and colored the whole petal and then I cleaned it off and I dipped the tip into berry burst and colored in the centers. And that's how I got the two-tone on there. This one I just colored in with Berry Burst. But that gives you an idea right here of all four of those different flowers. So those are the two larger ones, these are the two smaller ones, and the two different designs. If you're interested in purchasing this bundle and you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to help you with that. You can leave me a comment below, you can contact me through my blog at pattystamps.com, or you can simply click on any of the shop online links at pattystamps.com. Patty Mom. I hope you enjoyed these ideas and I hope that you will have fun playing with the climbing orchid bundle. Thanks for joining me today.